What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Behind the Tune here at Middleton Motorsports. Uh, my name is Matt, I'm the tuner here at the shop. So behind me today, 2011 Corvette C6 Grand Sport. So this customer installed his own cam, his own headers, uh, his old, own cold air intake, and brought it to us for tuning. So I did some street tuning. Sorry about, the, sorry about the horn. These guys are screwing around out there. It's a nice day out here. So anyway, C6 Corvette. So did some drivability tuning on it already. Got that dialed in. So we got it strapped up on the dyno. I've done a couple pulls so far. So let's go, uh, let's go take a look. Walk over here to the screen. So this is where I'm at so far. Looking pretty good. Pretty typical of a cammed LS3. Um, no cam only, I should say. Obviously no head work, stock intake manifold. Um, that's pretty typical what you're gonna see. I've done hundreds of LS3 combinations over the years. Um, the previous shop I worked at, we specialized in GM. So I've done a lot of this platform. So a lot of this E38 ECU, uh, which is the year range that these Corvettes had for an ECU LS3s and uh, fifth gen Camaros also. A lot of tuning on these things. Um, and this is pretty typical what you're gonna see um, with a cam only, cam header, cold air deal on an LS3. So stock intake manifold's pretty much done, you know, like right at 6,300. Um, and they, I mean, I've, I wanna say a hundred times over, I've, I've seen this same number between 470 and 480 on a cam, a cam LS3. So um, I'm gonna do one more pull just to back this up. I got the air fuel and timing dialed in where I want it, where it's happy. This is a 91 octane car. Um, he wants to run on pump gas. He's gonna road race this car, so I am being very cognizant of temperatures when I'm doing this stuff. Make sure that stuff is looking good at higher temperatures, especially higher oil temperatures. Um, so I'm gonna set the camera down. We're gonna spin this thing up one more time um, just, to, just to back this run up. And that'll wrap it up for this one. And then we can go over some data and go over the final, uh, the final graph and see where we're at. So air temp came up a little bit in the shop. Um, I let it sit. This first pull I did this morning, or I should say third pull was the red line, fourth pull blue line. So you can see the overlays are almost identical, just a little bit more intake air temp was all that is. Drop the power, five horsepower, which is pretty typical. It was, uh, it was nice and cool this morning. It was like 60 degrees and now it's like 75. So um, we lost just a little bit with intake air temp. Car sat, heat soaked a little bit and uh, but yeah, you can see both lines are overlaid, almost identical. Um, I'm turning this thing out right at 6,900. I got the limiter set to seven. So I'm, I just touched the limiter there, but uh, everything's looking good. That's looking really good. That's right where we need to be on this car. So we can take a look. I'm gonna jump in here. We can take a look at this data log. Let me bear with me here while I pull this thing up and try to get rid of that reflection. Okay. So, so you can see, being 91, we're gonna see just a couple little nibbles of the knock sensor. I'm running, running this right up against the knock sensors. And uh, if you can find 93, then that would be a better thing, but 91 will work. I have the, um, so on these LS cars, and I, I've maybe dove in too much on these LS, the LS stuff here on the channel. I do, obviously do a lot of Mustangs. Um, GM kind of does it a similar way, and I talk about HDFX systems on Mustangs. Um, GM kind of has a similar system where they have high and low octane tables. So the high octane table is basically, from the factory, they're vastly different, and they, there's more timing in some areas on the low octane tables than on the high octane. They, they have a Simulink type, type software, and uh, MATLAB software that simulates and builds all these tables. So it's not really a human component to this. There's not a lot of human components when these tunes are written by these OEMs. Um, and so when we go in and fine tune these things for, you know, the camshaft, I'm going through and making pretty major changes to the timing tables. So, um, so what it'll do is I'll always revert to the high octane on these cars. That's what it wants to run. And if it sees a, enough knock 
it will it will learn down to the low octane. So the low octane, I always obviously have less timing in. So in case of an event of poor fuel quality or um, just anything, maybe something gets lean, it has the ability to drop the timing, um, you know, from a standpoint of dropping to this lower octane table. Um, and that's just a there's a there's a whole knock adaptive learning section here under the under the timing section in the HP Tuner software um, that it'll kind of use as an octane modifier, learn up and learn down, whatever. So um, I always, obviously, especially for something that's going to get road raced, drag race car, you know you're going to run E85 in, you know, every car is different. And that's why, that's kind of the way I treat my tuning. Every single car is going to have a different, uh, different use, different tune. Um, it's not really cookie cutter. Um, also, I'm very familiar, you know, so these types of cars, uh, these these C6 Vets and 5th Gen Camaros and like the 07 to 13 pickup trucks all use similar ECUs. Um, they use a virtual torque and a virtual argument efficiency, similar to um, direct injected stuff. Um, obviously, I touch on all that. You know, you're getting into, when you're changing the camshaft on these things, we're getting into changing this VVE table. So HP Tuners has a nice way of laying this out into a graphical format. And um, GM's model doesn't really put it into a graph format like this. It's just an algorithm. And HP Tuners has been nice enough to take that algorithm and take the, all the constants and build it into a 3D graph like this that we can edit. So that along with the virtual torque, um, will affect the way these things run, especially with a cam. You can really smooth these things out and make these things run, you know, cruise, idle. You still want the chop, obviously, but once you get them above 1500 RPM, you want them to run smooth like stock. So um, these tables, editing these tables, do that. You know, getting those tables dialed in properly for the bigger camshaft. So you don't really see a lot of cam changes in the Mustang world, in the Coyote world, but on these LS pushrod engines, the camshafts make big jumps in power. So these cars, typically an LS3 car like this, will make, with bolt-ons, without a cam, will make about 420-ish at the wheels. Um, the camshaft's about a 50 horsepower gain. That's just, just changing the camshaft. In some other supercharged applications, you'll see a 100 horsepower gain. Uh, like LSAs and LS9s and LT4s. So, um, but tuning those camshafts in, because you're completely changing the volumetric efficiency of the engine, um, requires to change, you gotta change all these tables to get them to run properly. Um, you wanna be able to start it in any temperature and idle it in any temperature and, you know, go to a car show and have it heat soak and then be able to hop in it two hours later and have it fire right up and not stumble in front of all the guys, you know, at the car show. So, um, and the same with a racetrack. You want it to run right at the racetrack. You want to be able to fire it up cold start in the morning and take it to work and all those things. So um, this is a mass airflow car, um, similar to a Coyote, like a Coyote 5 liter, not a Predator, but like a Coyote has a mass airflow sensor, similar deal. It's got a mass airflow table, um, mass, airflow, mass airflow curve. So it's like a transfer function kind of where it's frequency output of the, of the math versus you're telling it how much airflow at that frequency and that's that's the major tuning component for fueling and air mass which the air mass then translates to a spark so um you can see here spark air mass and rpm that's how the spark is calculated so that airflow meter is very very important getting that dialed in um, and then that other volumetric efficiency table i was just showing you guys that's used for transitional fueling so when you're kind of on and off the throttle or if you stab the throttle um, some of the tuning on these cars, you'll just shut that off and just run on a mass airflow only, but if you can, it works really good leaving that table on, and GM uses kind of a blended system, so um, dynamic versus high speed, and that's getting into some more technical stuff, and I know a lot of you guys have, guys have checked out by now, but I nerd out about this stuff. This is what I do for a living, so um, I like nerding out about it, and if you guys want to learn about it, I'm willing to share some of this stuff with you guys. So, um, yeah. That data log were, we are, you know, this is usually what I do on a cammed LS3. Um, as with a bolt-on LS3, you're gonna start, you know, as the RPM is low, you're gonna have less volume efficiency, especially with a cam, and you can push a little more timing out of it. As the VE 
approaches peak torque. So this car did peak at 50, it kind of two peak torques, kind of between 45 and 52. Um, you can see how this kind of seafoam line, that's the air mass, that rises up and kind of creates this peak right in here through that range. And that's where you want to, that's where the peak cylinder pressure is. So peak torque is always peak cylinder pressure on any engine um, for the most part. And that's where you're actually going to want to put a little bit of timing out of it. And then as the VE drops and the RPM builds, you can bring that timing back in. Um, so again, you can kind of see I'm riding, I'm just riding the octane limit of this where it's just nibbling a couple little tents of knock sensor. So you can see that I'm pretty much there. Um, again, I've done enough of these where I know what kind of timing these are going to want on 91, 93, or E85. Um, air fuel, um, again, I read in Lambda. I shoot, I usually shoot on a cam car, I usually shoot for right at that 0.87. Um, you can see it's kind of flickering between 0 0.87, 0 0.86, 0 0.88. So we're right there, 0 0.87, 0 0.86. Um, and that's where these, are, these things are happy. Um, it might make a couple more horsepower if I lean it out a smidge more, but on pump gas, and you can see we're already kind of in this knock limit, um, it's going to be happier from a timing standpoint with a smidge richer, and especially from if he is going to road race this car, which he did not mention it to me that he is, um, especially from a road race standpoint, you want to make sure you have enough fuel in it, especially when the temperatures get hot, to keep the fuel does cool. So fuel being sprayed into the intake port, even gasoline does help cool things down. Um, not enough fuel is hotter. So we want to push it towards the rich end of things, even if we lose a couple horsepower to the safe end of things. So, so that'll wrap it up for this car. Um, thanks for riding along with me for this little tuning session. And uh, I got another one behind me here, another Mustang that we're going to uh, get up on the dyno next, supercharged three valve. And uh, we did an Alproc supercharger on that. So that'll be the next one up here. And I got a couple more out in the parking lot waiting. So thanks for watching guys. And uh, we'll talk to you later.